All right, so look, here's the deal. I have been absolutely bombarded with requests to use Cramorant lately. And I gotta tell you, after this one, I am a believer. This thing goes extremely hard and it has some really fun mechanics that make it one of the most fun things to use. As always, if you're into that type of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button or else a Cramorant will literally launch a Pikachu at your face. I don't make the rules, I just come up with them as I go. Let's get ourselves into the match. So my opponent is going to end up leading off with the Viking Meowth. I swear, I haven't seen a Berserker in like four score and seven years, but I do know that I don't really want to stay in here with the Bink. I would like to get my Stealth Rock up, however, and Iron Head is just not really ideal. But what I can do is basically turn this shit into a Disco. I'm going to go into the Weezing as essentially I know I can take any attack this thing wants to throw at me. I can then force it out with the threat of a Will-O-Wisp, something like a Flamethrower, and uh, just overall come out here and have a good time. So... As Weezing comes in here, he's actually going to end up going for the Fake Out, which is totally fine. Slaps the balls around a little bit, but uh, we do have a great matchup here in that I basically scare this thing out with a Flamethrower, but I'm going to go for the Will-O-Wisp as kind of just the safest option here in case they did, you know, for whatever reason, want to stay in. But of course, they are going to switch that thing out. It's actually kind of a threat to my team as they're going to end up going into their own Cramorant. I swear to God. We got double the cram, and that means double the fun in this match. So, this thing taking the Will-O-Wisp is ideal for them, just because, of course, this thing just fires off special attacks. And with the burn, it's going to be a little bit of chip damage, but it doesn't really make a huge difference. So, uh, at this point, Weezing does not want to stay in here and take, basically, whatever this thing wants to throw at me. I actually don't exactly know what type of cram run this thing is going to be, so I figure my best bet is to actually just switch into the tree. I'm thinking this thing might be some type of choice cram rant where... If he locks himself into a water move, Trevenant has a good matchup. So, in comes the spookiest tree that has ever existed, and I'm basically looking to get a nice little free watering here. They go for the Hydro Pump, and they actually are able to land it. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but what we do see is they're actually going to be Life Orb. And that is unfortunate because now it's guaranteed they have the dual stab with a flying move, and uh, I basically just kind of test to see if this thing has enough damage to knock out the Trevenant. So, I'm going to go for that Horn Leech, as they're actually going to end up committing the Terra here. And... I'll tell you what, if Cramorant didn't look goofy enough already, now he's just straight up got balloons on his head, looking like an absolute doofus. <laughs> but uh, that is going to boost his flying stab enough to the point where an air slash is definitely going to send my ass back to tree hell. So uh, this thing does finish me off with an air slash. I do not really have much that wants to switch into that. As, uh, you know, unfortunately down goes the Trevenant. So the Cram does log the first kill of the game, but I guarantee you it's not going to be the last. As this thing does take a little bit of burn, a little bit of Life Orb, and at this point, I can essentially go into Metacham, who is going to be Choice Scarf, and I can just threaten this bad boy with an Ice Punch, and honestly, Young Nipple Knee is like the goat of lower tiers. This thing with huge power is such an insane threat that uh, there's not a lot that wants to deal with this thing. So I'm going to go for that Ice Punch, like I mentioned, and they're actually going to end up switching into the Orb. The Rabska comes in, and this is always kind of a weird guy to see. I'm thinking, damn, now that means there's going to be potential Revival Blessing shit going on, and overall... I do not like pondering this orb at this time. So the Ice Punch doesn't do a whole lot, tells me this thing is going to be physically defensive. But the one dude that I can actually bring Carbink in is this Rabska. It shouldn't have a lot of damage, and this is going to open up the door to basically allow the Carbink to kind of just do some of his Carbink shenanigans. So I come in on a Bug Buzz, which I do take super nicely, and now I can both set up my Stealth Rock and potentially get up some, some of them Stealth Rocks, and more importantly, some Dual Screens, which will allow my team to have much better longevity and bulk. So. Uh, Rapska actually does end up staying in here because it has the coverage with the Earth Power. Again, Carbink out here floating 12 feet in the air somehow gets hit by an Earth Power. And uh, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage, and plus I can now go for a Light Screen. Guarantee I can take some more, and uh, then I can also end up setting up the Reflect. So unfortunately, with Carbink at this low of health, it's not really worth it for me to switch out here. So I do decide to just basically go for the Dual Screens. And with that Light Clay, it's going to be sticking around for a little while here. So... They're going to go ahead and conserve the orb, and they're going to end up switching back into the Berserker, which is a good play because Carbink literally cannot touch this thing, and uh, it's kind of the biggest threat to me. But we've done exactly what the Bink needed to do. I got up the Stealth Rock, I got up Dual Screens, and uh, I'm essentially going to let the Carbink go down here as I kind of just hope it knocks me out so then I can get a free switch. And then I tell you what, it is about to be time. So I go for the Moon Blast to basically heal the damn thing, and he finishes me off with an Iron Head. So... Carbink does go down, but that does open up an opportunity for the absolute legend that is Cramorant to see if I can get some stuff going. So, this is going to be a Choice Specs Cramorant set that is built around just pure damage. Because that is, when you're looking at a Cramorant, that's what you're thinking. Damage. So, 
I am going to lock myself into the Surf here, and the reason is they don't have anything that resists it, and I can get some huge damage kind of off on whatever. So, I do go for that. It is going to do a bunch of damage to the Berserker, as he then hits me with a Play Rough, which, behind the Reflect, we are looking good. Plus, I just get to throw the fish at this thing's face, and it does almost end up knocking this thing out. It's not a huge deal, because I do just outspeed and finish with another Surf. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, what the hell even is Cramorant's gimmick? I'll break it down for you. Essentially, Every time you use Surf, you come up with one of two things in your mouth, either an Aracuda or a Pikachu. After the opponent hits you, they then take some damage or potentially a Para if it's the Pikachu. Speaking of Pikachu, we've got a clone here, and that is going to be the more Pico. So, I know that this thing, if it's a plus speed nature, does outspeed me, but I've, I've come prepared for this. I do have the Terra Ground to cover for that electric weakness, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. The Terra Ground... While an offensive Terra would be pretty nice, I opt to go for the defensive one here, expecting an electric Aura Wheel. Uh, so I got a fish flopping in my mouth, got the earth on my head, looking like a goofball. And as it turns out, I actually end up outspeeding the Morpico because this turns out to be an adamant nature rather than a jolly one. And that allows me to outspeed by like literally one point, which is kind of the craziest thing ever. So <laughs> I'm actually not kidding, by the way. Adamant Morpico has a speed stat of 149, whereas Timid Cramorant is sitting at 150. So that is amazing. We're over here locked and loaded with one in the chamber as Furret comes in. And I'm thinking, behind the Reflect, I can definitely take an attack here. And uh, he's going to end up going for the knockoff. Of course, that does launch a fish at his face, which does do a bit of chip damage. And that is going to actually put this thing in range to where a Surf, even without the choice specs, is going to be enough to take care of the Furret. So that is amazing. And what's even more amazing is this time, we actually have a Pikachu in our mouth who is just out here squirming around. <laughs> and I feel... I feel bad for the little guy, but we get to see the effects of the Pikachu. But first, we've got a little cram on cram violence here. And this is actually going to be a little bit scary because we basically have a speed tie here. Theirs is a plus speed nature, mine is as well. But of course, I actually do end up winning that coin flip and we're able to outspeed and finish them off with that ice beam, which is amazing because we keep the Pikachu locked and loaded. And uh, Cramorant is truly going on a tear like, like never before seen. So... We love to see it, and unfortunately Pikachu does not, because he's like, please, let me out of here, man. So, they are down to two Pokemon left. It's going to be this Persian and the Rabska. So, Persian is going to be able to outspeed me, so I'm wondering what type of coverage this thing has. Uh, it turns out to be foul play, and luckily Cramorant is barely able to take that, launch a Pikachu at this thing, and while we do some damage, more importantly, we do get the Para, which... Since I don't have my choice spec, Surf is actually quite not quite enough damage to knock it out, but the Pikachu is clutch enough to the point where, with the Para, we actually now outspeed, and another Surf should be able to take care of it. Plus, we just end up with another Pikachu in our mouths, which is honestly insane. We're just over here murdering a full family of Pikachus, and <laughs> down goes the kitty who does not enjoy the water. And uh, this is like the funniest thing ever. Cramorant is actually the greatest Pokemon ever. You cannot change my mind. So, again, the last Pokemon is the Rabska, and we do have the coverage for this, as I can basically just go for the Air Slash here. I figure it'd be enough damage to kill, but it actually lives with like 5 HP, but we are able to get the flinch, which is honestly just the icing on the cake, because that's kind of hilarious. And <laughs> then uh, we just finish this off with a Surf. So, we keep a Pikachu in the chamber, just in case. I keep that motherfucking thing on me, and that is going to be the end of the match. So... I thought that that was just kind of the craziest thing ever seeing Cramorant do unseen things. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed as well. Listen, if you did, leave a like on the video. The support really does help out. And uh, hey, shout out to Cramorant. This thing is truly a beast. Leave a comment on what Pokemon you'd like me to use next.